One other thing that is kind of cool, um, my youngest child, his name is William Peter, and oh. Peter is after uh, Pete yeah. Frades. My name is Greg Sullivan. I'm an assistant baseball coach here at Boston College, and I'm entering into my 13th season. We have come a long way from our days on Shea Field and what the Pete Frady Center and the Harrington Athletics Village offers for our student athletes is really a classroom, quote unquote, for them to keep developing both as a player, but more importantly, as a student and as a teammate. My name is John West. I'm a senior right-handed pitcher here at Boston College. This space is absolutely essential to our team camaraderie. It's been game changing. It's built perfect. It's so functional. It's so easy for us to operate out of this space now. It's, it's been awesome. The Pete Frady Center is roughly a 37,000 square foot facility we have here on our Brighton campus at Boston College. The first floor offers a seven cage setup for our student athletes here to use in any capacity. We can break them up into seven individual cages. We can have one giant cage. We can have four individual cages. We can have five individual cages. So it allows not only our hitters, but also allows all of our players, both positionally and pitchers, to be able to get any sort of work done in this space that they need. As you go into the second or the bottom floor, we have a locker room, state of the art, um, allows our players again to really embody that formation and allows them to be with each other. That locker room allows our players to have a space to be able to be with one another, but it also allows our players to develop. We can use it for team meetings, scouting report meetings, anything like that. But more importantly, the structure of the locker room is set up so that all of the benches are facing each other. And that was done on purpose to allow, again, our players to engage with each other, know them as a teammate, but also know them as a person. When you make your way down the hallway, we have a, uh, a weight room that is available for our student athletes here as well. This is made up more so for our you know, smaller individual groups. It's not our full team weight room, but allows you know any player for any reason, whether it be injury, extra work, for them to be able to get into a space and work with our strength and conditioning staff to, again, to continue to develop their game from a strength and speed standpoint. Also featured uh, on the second floor or the bottom floor of the facility is our student athlete lounge. Again, another space for our student athletes to engage with each other. You know, having a, a fuel lounge now and a lounge to hang out in, play ping pong, foosball, eat, do homework. It's essential, we don't leave this place really. We hang out here all the time. The Harrington Athletics Village on the Pellegrini Diamond, uh, again, is state of the art. It's, it's a full turf facility. Again, being a school in the Northeast, weather is something that we have to consider. The turf allows us to really be game ready as long as it's sunny and, and warm out. We also have state of the art Musco lights that again, allow our student athletes to compete and play in really any scenario that we need to. My favorite part about you know this facility is the name on the front door and that's Pete Frades. Pete Frades was um, a player here in the Boston College program and was a captain. No matter who you talk to, whether it's a former teammate, a friend, a classmate, a former coach, when they hear the word Pete Frades before ALS was selfless, hardworking, competitive. My name is Dave Preziosi. I played at Boston College from 2002 to 2006 and was teammates of Pete Frady's from 2004 to 2006. My relationship with Pete started when I was a junior at BC. He came in as a freshman. I knew right away that he was special in terms of just his character. We became very close, so close, in fact, that after we graduated, I was playing professional baseball in Italy at the time, and he was playing professional baseball in Germany, and they had a two-week break in the middle of their season, and he came down and visited me, and we had about 10 days in Italy together, which is something I never would have forgotten, but in retrospect, was even more special. In the spring of 2012, Pete was diagnosed with ALS. Essentially at 27 years old was handed a, a death sentence, no known cure, no known cause. A lot of us, who knows how we would have handled that news. Pete handled that news and, and ran towards it. His directive was raise awareness and raise money. And that's exactly what he did. And it was never a woe is me, why me? It was, we're gonna change the face of this disease and we're gonna do it together. He was named our director of baseball operations shortly thereafter. 
You look back on that time when he was with the program, and a lot of people, including his parents, would say that, you know, Pete certainly got a lot out of being around a team again as he went through his, his battle with ALS, but I think we were all just as privileged to be around him. He looked at this disease knowing that all of his work, or most of his work, was not going to directly affect him. Um, but his whole goal was to make sure that this disease ended and that he had a, a major effect in preventing and helping people who were diagnosed after him. So I've always said that in the history of Boston College sports, there really have only been two things that have transcended athletics. The first one was Wells Crowler and the red bandana on September 11th and the other one is Pete Frady's and the Ice Bucket Challenge. Summer of, of 2014, Pete uh, had reached out to, to our head coach, Mike Gambino at the time, and said, hey, um, I just got a direct message from a friend of mine, Pat Quinn, who was also um, battling ALS down in New York City, and said, hey, we're gonna do this Ice Bucket Challenge. Here's what you do. You put water in a bucket, you dump it over your head, you challenge three people and you give those people, you know, 24 hours to meet your challenge or they have to donate to ALS. You know, it started as, you know, a small BC network thing and legitimately within 36 hours, you know, Justin Timberlake and Oprah Winfrey and across the world and nation, these ice bucket challenges were happening. And it's funny, I, I got married that summer and my wife and I were on our honeymoon and we were in a bar in Ireland and I looked up on the news and there was Pete Frady's and they were talking about the ALS Ice Bucket Challenge. What he's done for people that really have been experiencing this disease, he's given them hope and that's something that you really can't put a, a, enough of a, a, of a price tag on. The, the $300 million that he raised is amazing, don't get me wrong, but the hope that he's given people that one day there will be a cure for something that just never really got a lot of attention put on it ever since Lou Gehrig is really amazing and, and transcended. Walking in here every day and looking up at the door with the name Pete Frades is an absolute honor for all of us. For all future generations of bird ball coming through, it's gonna be really cool to see how Pete's mission, you know, continues to be lasting in the years to come. My name is Vince Semini. I'm a graduate student from Scranton, Pennsylvania, and I'm an infielder. First off is the home white jersey. Usually we wear these on Friday, Friday nights at home. Saturday, we kind of alternate between the Cardinal jersey and the camouflage jersey, which we got later in the season last year. It's an important reminder of the, the troops and the sacrifice they make every day. And on Sunday, we usually wear the gold with the white pants. Obviously, everyone knows about the Mar uh, Boston Marathon. We're at mile 21 on Com Ave, so, you know, important reminder for us, you know, the tragedy at the Boston Marathon. Like the Red Sox, we thought it would be a good idea to honor those victims and the runners uh, through a jersey. New Balance is a well-known baseball brand, obviously, and their headquarters in Boston allows for pretty much unlimited customization for jerseys, batting gloves, anything you can think of. They're here all the time working with us, trying to, you know, find the best fit. I know these are a very popular cleat uh, amongst our team. I haven't seen anything like this from another brand where, you know, it's a lifestyle shoe that has cleats on the bottom. They made their way into the big leagues and we have some alum, Sal Freilich, who wore these I know in spring training. Dean Maridi comes in usually in the fall and lets us test out all their new models for that year and they kind of let you know the changes on the bat from the year prior. They also let you test the bat out in BP so I'm a big proponent of testing every bat I can and trying to find out you know what's going to be my weapon for the season. Just like I talked about before with New Balance and full customization, Franklin comes in and does the same thing for us. Here's just an example. They you know provide us with Boston Marathon batting gloves in that same color. There's also you know certain features that we have access to with Franklin where they can put a pad in um, for guys with a hand injury, maybe on the palm or protection on the back of the hand, like you see here with the you know padded. Uh, batting glove for your left hand. The Evo Shield stuff over my years being at BC has made tremendous strides. I know guys, they've tried out different brands regarding, you know, elbow protection or wrist protection. And really Evo Shield's always been the number one they go back to. I've had certain ankle problems with fouling balls off my foot or getting hit in the hand or the elbow. And they've always been willing to, you know, help us out and make sure we're protected. <laughs>